The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN headquarters in St. Petersburg, Florida, 10 a.m. Eastern time on Monday morning. Checking in on markets. We have the Dow right now up 62 points, trading 26,860. S&P is positive by four, trading at 2,982. NASDAQ negative by three points, trading at 8,099. Tom's going to be joining us right after the first break, checking out some of the charts this morning as we open up the week in trading. We're getting a little bit of volatility on the opening bell. So 9 a.m. this morning, you had markets basically at pre-market highs we touched that level about three times in the Dow of 26,877 you spiked down to a quick low right after the opening bell of 26,811 and then we're seeing those markets climb right up back up to that level 26,866 right now in the Dow NASDAQ 100 we haven't quite got the bounce that we did in the Dow NASDAQ trading at 7885 you spiked down to a low of 7850 at 10 a.m. Eastern time right as I came on the air for that first market update and 78.57 right now. S&P 500 sliding a bit as well within the last hour at 9.05, trading at 29.91. You trade down about 10 S&P points to 29.80.75 and we're up a few points from there. Crude oil bouncing around this morning, reaching some highs of 20, excuse me, 57.60 on the dot. You have crude trading at 57.38. There's your gold contract spiking to a high of 1523.59 at exactly 9 a.m. this morning. These are five-minute bars we're looking at, and gold now trading at 1517.42. And we're getting a little bit of euro strength, dollar weakness. You have the euro trading at 11060. Keeping on the idea of currencies on yields, jumping over. So we have yields rising again this morning. The 10-year right now sitting at about 1.618. Jumping over to that chart, there is your yield. You put this on a shorter time frame. You're seeing some action right above that 1.6 mark. Putting this on a longer time frame, pretty remarkable. September 4th, we were sitting on a 1.466. We're now back above 1.6%, putting this on a longer time frame chart. Quite a pullback. We're back a full percentage point from where we were trading at just about five months ago in the middle of April. Other news you have out there on the market, I mentioned it in the market update as well. AT&T shares trading dramatically higher this morning, but pulling back before we dig into the story, checking out the chart because it's paired some of those gains this morning. The market getting a $3.2 billion stake from activist investor Elliott Management. The AT&T trades from 7.30 a.m. from under $36.50, almost reaches $40. But from that price level, you've now pulled back about half of the gains, even more so. You have AT&T trading at $37.83, more than $2 off that high that it reached about two hours ago at 8.05 this morning. And jumping back to the story, so there it is, and of course this article written earlier, 7%, that number we saw just at about 4.6% now in the positive, as AT&T soars after Paul Singer's Elliott Management sends a letter to the company's board and announces one of the firm's largest stakes ever in the telecom giant. The activist investor said in a press release that it owns $3.2 billion of AT&T stock and that it believes the company could be worth at least $60 a share. To recap, right now, Trading at 37.85, that would be quite a pop. That'd be almost 60% from where we're trading at right now. Jumping back to the story. Well, it's too soon to tell whether AT&T can create value with Time Warner. We remain cautious on the benefits of this combination, the letter read. And so AT&T shares trading higher and pulling it back $60 per share, catapulting the stock up 7%, but some of that's been paired just because they said 60. Maybe that'd be some time. The purpose of today's letter is to share our thoughts on how AT&T can improve its business and realize a historic increase in the value for its shareholders. Elliott believes that through readily achievable initiatives, increased strategic focus, improved operational efficiency, a formal capital allocation framework, and enhanced leadership and oversight, they're looking for $60 by the end of 2021. So you're talking about 27 months, basically, you'd get that return. Other news out there, you have Chipotle getting an upgrade as you have digital sales potentially helping drive Chipotle stock upward, according to the analysts over at Wedbush. 
Check out the price tag. The firm upgraded the stock to outperform from neutral and hiked its 12-month price target to $980 from $780. In March, Chipotle started a loyalty program as part of, part of a strategy to build digital engagement, driving the stock up nearly 40% since the launch, jumping over to Chipotle Mexican, Mexican Grill, CMG. They're getting a pop on those news. Eight fifty seven fifty, the high. So they were looking for, again, 980 I believe, was that price target. So we're sitting at 857 and putting Chipotle on a longer-term chart. Dealing with quite the woes of their E. coli outbreak, you go from 754 all the way back in 2015. Pretty remarkable. We're talking about four years ago that story first broke in about October of that year. You trade from 754 and then quite a run of these. They've turned things around. We're talking about just February of last year, they're sitting about $250. You're now sitting at all-time highs in Chipotle of $857.51. Other news out there in terms of Target rolling out potentially their loyalty program nationwide. Target's new loyalty program set to roll out nationwide October 6th, less than one month. It offers birthday rewards, other personalized coupons. Of course, Target trying to compete with the likes of Walmart and Amazon Target just getting quite a pop on their earnings last week well or a couple weeks ago we'll pull up that chart in a moment Target said over 18 months more than 2 million people have already enrolled in Target Circle which doesn't require the person to pay a membership fee or have a Target credit card it said those people have completed more than 14 million transactions and that people using Target Circle are spending more in stores and online than those not enrolled and of course anytime you're going to be enrolled they probably get your data in there and that's probably what you're basically paying with them tracking you but nonetheless check out the target chart this morning basically flat this is a long term going all the way back to the year 2000 we'll put this on a little shorter time frame even over the last year on a daily quite a rebound from sixty dollars just on that december 24th spike low in all of the markets last year Target rebounds from $60. We're now sitting at $109.91, reaching a high that looks like on Friday of $110.94. And there is that earnings surprise I talked about. So August 27th, excuse me, August 20th to their announcement on August 21st. In between, you have Target going from the close on 820 of $85.53. We're now up $25 from that price level just from August 20th. Other news out there, jumping around to what we have, pulling it over on this screen. We'll get there. Apple denies claims it broke Chinese labor laws in iPhone factory. Apple continuing to face some headlines that are rough. Apple on Monday denying most of what is in a report which alleges that the iPhone maker and its manufacturing partner Foxconn violated Chinese labor laws. A report by China Labor Watch, a New York City-based labor watchdog claimed around 50% of the workforce employed in August at the largest iPhone factory in Zhengzhou, maybe? Zhengzhou? I'm not. China, probably saying that correctly, incorrectly, were temporary hires, also known as dispatch workers. Chinese labor, on the other hand, states temporary workers cannot exceed 10% of the total employed. Jump over to Apple. And again, we'll zoom in. This is just the yearly chart. Apple having that spike low right around December 24th, actually reaching the low on January 3rd of 142, trading at 215 right now, putting it on a five-minute chart. You can see actually up almost 1% this morning with the market. Stay tuned, folks. Come back. Tom's going to be joining us. We'll break down this market right now. we got pretty much markets flat. S&P's flat. we get the NASDAQ negative about five points. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. Back, folks. Welcome. Welcome back, folks. Appreciate your growl and a prowl with us out here. We'll we, get there. What's that? Monday we, morning, we, baby. We will, it's trading action. Let's go. We have the uh, Dow Industries right now up, uh, up uh, 87. NASDAQ is flat. S&Ps are up four. Gold contract. Gold contract flat at 12, at 15, 14 an ounce. We had silver up four cents, $18.16 an ounce. Light sweet crude, 80, up 88 cents. Fifty-seven dollars forty cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year down nineteen ticks, one thirty twenty-four. A thirty-year off a point and twenty-two ticks at one sixty-two twenty-six. King dollar. King dollar down two hundred ticks. Trade ninety-seven seven twenty-five. The euro is at one ten. Yen is at one oh seven point four, and the pound is at one twenty-three to one U.S. dollar. So let's get over here and take a look at this S and P. So uh, we had the S and P. So Friday, folks, the S&P tried to get to a higher high. Couldn't handle it. Today, you got to a higher high, and we'll see how this uh, baby shakes out. You know, the, the highs of Thursday, which was a big day, uh, 29.87. Yeah. Um, you know, we got to 29.93 today, and uh, we'll see whether it can uh, handle it. And we're within a point of that high right now. Is it right? Yes. 29.86.75, yeah. And the number is this uh, August 8th. August 8th is a monster. It uh, went from 3017 to 2947. And I think it's August 1st there, yeah. Yes, and if you take a look at the spy, what you're going to see is that that's where they were unloading this thing in a huge way. You know, 142 million shares. Thursday was a good day. We came into that with 83 million, but it was still 143. Sure. Friday wasn't, but Friday just went sideways at 49. This is where the side. This is that's the battle line right there. Notes and bonds. Let's go take a look at the note and bond market. Because what the, the note and bond market did do is it a pullback, had some volume, but it was still much lighter volume than it was going into, and that's what it's doing out here today too. You get uh, 678,000 contracts trading. And you're going to see, I'll, I'll bring this to the other contract uh, was trading into. Okay. We did 1.9 million on Thursday. Yes. Uh, 1.7 on Friday. If we go into the U contract, which we will get a better idea of what we were actually trading into there because we just rolled contracts. What you're going to see here is that you're trading into 
I think you went back oh, to the I, 30 year I though. Did. And yeah, uh, let's go this way. Perfect. Go. Looking at the 10 year now, back a contract essentially. Yes. And what you're going to see there is. It's a big volume. It's a big volume. Well, you get. That's, that's lower than yeah. that 2.4. Actually, That's weird. That, oh, no, hold on. I get the same thing. That's just going it's TYU. On. TYU, yes. There we go. I see yeah. some threes. There we go. Right. Yeah. 3.1 million. Yeah. And that low of that area, folks, is 129.28. Gold. Let's take a look at the gold contract because we got a correction happening here, folks. Uh, you know, gold itself, flat. 15.15. We go take a look at some of these uh, equities, however. What you're going to see is that you had the equities pull back with some volume last week. And the look, the where we had broken out from goes all the way back to the September 5th. Uh, September? August 5th. August 5th. Yes. Uh, so the GDX right now, we're 29, uh, 28, 29. This can get down to uh, 27, 61 in a heartbeat. Okay. The XAU. And you got to remember, we haven't had, we really haven't had a pullback since May. Yes. So. Oh, it's been quite a run, man. The, I mean, there it is on that chart, right? Where'd right. the run start? Oh, yeah, I can tell, right? Yeah, <laughs> May, May 30th. There you go, exactly, right? yeah. So the XAU, 9313, and this thing's, you know, 9197's game. Yeah, it's and we up. just went from under 65. What is, even this this very day, 6621 yeah. up to 102. 66 to 102, I mean, quite a run, man. Monster. Yeah, you're talking Monster. about almost a 60%, 50 to 60% pop. Yeah. And King Dollar. What do we have at King Dollar? Now, this is going to be the wild one. Well, it has been the wild one for a long time, too. Uh, you have, you're coming downtown today. Not huge volume. 13,000 contracts. And what happens with King Dollar, folks, is that most of the contract volume for the day really is done by, like, 11 o'clock. 8.30 in the morning, King Dollar gets active. Um, and it, the, the volume seems to come at the beginning of the day. So this may or may not end up with volume out here today. Uh, the next le le leg down, though, that, well, the next lower range is 97.07050. Okay. You get inside that, that would basically set up that finally King Dollar is going to give it up for a certain amount of time. We get the Fed uh, next week. We have no yes. no nothing happening this week. Yeah, well, the 18th not, not, ECB, happened. I believe, right? ECB this week, okay. Yeah, I and mean, how about Apple? I heard you doing that uh, that Apple story. So not bad, man. You yeah. hire child children in China, and your stock goes up almost a uh, full percent <laughs> as the market opens on Monday. Oh my God! Yeah, and I'm sure there's other factors going in there. But, oh yeah. Um, pretty pretty remarkable that that story hitting um, on the Bloomberg as well. I was pulling it up on CNBC, but even just uh, you know just to pull up, we got the headlines just to see how forefront. Here's your most active stocks, right? There's your Apple, a buck eighty, and you know they always have one headline that kind of pops next to them, and they got the Apple Foxconn. There's the story. You yeah. know, broke Chinese labor laws for iPhone production, and I covered it briefly at the top. But yeah, but pretty, pretty interesting. So I guess that's to one of the main findings: temporary staff known as dispatch workers made up about fifty percent of the workforce. It's supposed to be ten percent. I mean, that's just. Uh, right. And that's in August. This is like right now. Yes. Yep. So, yeah. and that is uh, a watch group based in New York, but. Uh, but it's a Chinese law, exactly. so that's going to get interesting. Oh, yes, yeah, for sure. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. The, How about AT&T? Yes, they get the big story, man. I, I, I talked agree. About it. I know. Look at this thing, huh? Yeah, so they're getting... Uh, you don't see, you know, the, the bells basically trading up a point and a half overnight. Um, look at that money. And it was, um, it was as high as 39.90 something, so it was two bucks even higher. I mean, they put, I believe, a $60 price tag as an estimate. Really? Um, as to where they're looking, and so it popped. Um, yeah. Elliot urges shakeup. So uh, let's see. Ma Bell's sweeping transformation from Ma Bell to multimedia titan has gone both too far and not far enough. Elliot Management, Paul, billionaire Paul Singer, uh, as New York hedge funds disclosed a new $3.2 billion position. Well, that's a good position, Ed. Yes. But they have a huge market cap, but even that, no, that's still, still a good position. You put, you put a few billion in a company, man, you're probably going to pay attention to what that yeah. company's doing or have some and plans. And he's claiming that, uh, let's see, with plans to boast the share price more than 50% through asset sales and cost cutting. I think yeah, divesting assets, including satellite TV provider Direct TV. Um, Mexican wireless operations, pieces of the landline business, others urges AT&T, led by their CEO, to exit businesses, businesses that don't fit its strategy, run a more efficient operation, and stop making major acquisitions. I'm sure it's a little bit of a dicey day in the executive offices Ooh. over at AT&T, knowing you got to 
another investor. Especially Come. Singer. That's it, exactly. Well, the Singer's the guy, folks, just, this guy takes a, one of the longest term views in equities or anything he comes in. This is the guy that beat Argentina after 15 years. What does that mean, beat Argentina for? What happened is that the, um, when Argentina defaulted, okay. they thought they were going to just okay. get On away with debt. everything, That's it, right? Yeah. And he just never stopped. 15 years later, he ended up making 10 times as much. Yeah, because he was paying very little on that debt, right? Is that how, uh, and he ended up getting it paid off, which of course he ended up getting paid, paid off and it ended up working out. When I was looking at it though, I said, oh my God, you know, you're talking about, you really got to have tenacity because 15 years, sure. you know, he was in a losing position until he wasn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, So definitely. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials right now at 89. NASDAQ is down one. S&P's up three and a half. We're coming right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, the now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of KFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials up 86, NASDAQ up 1, S&P's up 3. Let's go. I want to... Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. Let me, okay. Let me, let me back it up. You're, you're a Freddie. Where? Uh, we'll get there. And what are we looking at? Which one are you jumping to? I'm looking for any... I, I'm, see, they have a five. Oh, there it is. That's why I haven't seen it. They have five letters now, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, they have five letters. Oh boy. 
Because what's going on? It, yeah. it, uh, there was no. Did you get it? No, no. Because what's happening here is that. We'll have to check it out at the break. Let's see. There. These things are exploding topside oh, because go. okay. what's going on, Fin and Freddie Mark Swords on a double whammy of good news. Well, what's, it's not a double whammy if it's a good news. Let's see. Yeah. Where are we going? They don't have, I was looking Can for Can we read symbol. the story? Yeah. Well, everybody probably zoomed in on that line, Jordan. So, soaring SH funds get good news on two fronts. So, you have Treasury Secretary Mnuchin saying he would soon reach a deal to allow the mortgage giants to retain earnings and a legal victory that gave shareholders renewed hope of getting their hands on some of the company's billions of dollars of profit. So Mnuchin, speaking in a Monday interview with Fox Business, said the Treasury is in the process of negotiating with the Federal Finance Housing Agency, Fannie and Fernie's regulator. We expect a near-term agreement to retain their earnings. Now, so the government kind of owns them right now, so maybe their earnings are kind of tied up and make sure that they're they what happens is that every they've been making billions and billions and they they can't even keep them they go right into the treasury okay they they only can have so much on their balance sheet and so this is probably yeah which that will allow them to build up their capital buffers considered essential for the companies to eventually be released from the federal control for Fannie and Freddie to hold on to their earnings the treasury and this FHFA would have to halt or revamp a controversial policy implemented during the Obama administration that requires the companies to send virtually all their profits to the Treasury. Now, keeping in mind, these companies were going to tank the entire U.S. economy. Oh, yeah. Where was a deal not put in place with the government backstop. Uh, hedge funds and other investors that own Fannie and Freddie shares have long fought to end the sweep um, through litigation. Yeah? Let's and uh, I wonder what it is. I know, in terms of that signal. We'll, we'll check it out at the break. I'm sure we'll be able to find it because they say they are popping, but that's where I wonder how it works, though, because they're, I yeah. Up we'll twenty three percent. Well, this would be the first part of them getting released. Yeah, essential to they exactly and, and let's say that if we were funds, we've been buying their shares for a long period of time. And that is pure speculation right. because you get nothing when you buy their shares. Yeah. Because the government owns like ninety one percent of them or something. Sure. Uh, but they've been banking and they've been they have the government in court. Yes, that it was a litigation. It, it yeah. was an illegal, you know, takeover yeah. during the depression. <laughs> well, just that one I'm not so. That's why I kind of made that point in the end. In oh, terms for sure. Of like illegal oh, if, takeover. If, if they didn't, folks, if, if they, the government if, doesn't step in and yeah. put a backstop, you if, know, if, every mortgage goes bust. They go bust. Every single yeah. pension fund that owns their stock that oh. just reverberates where every mortgage. Forget it. So a and remarkable. the mortgage market itself would have just stopped. Yes, housing markets yeah, crashed. Stopped. There's no it, you know, totally. They're selling all the paper. That's, yes. the, that's the bottom line. It's got to be a guarantee here. 877-927-6648. Let's get into the uh, X, uh, XLE. So uh, first let me look at this oil market. CLV. So we know oil's been moving around quite a bit. And then we get a, a new foreign... Uh, oh, not foreign minister, but in charge of... Uh, they put someone in charge of the in the Saudi royal family in charge okay. of uh, oil minister. Yeah, their their whole deal. And then what they're doing simultaneously now it has in the journal, folks. It's pretty wild this morning. They're they continuing with this Aramco, meaning that they want to, to, go, to IPO. go to IPO. Uh, in the journal this morning, they said that they went to the uh, richest families in Saudi Arabia. Okay. And they want them to buy from one to three percent. Of Aramco? Yeah, but, okay. they're, but they're claiming... Of the IPO or whatever it is, Of right? the IPO, but they're claiming that they're not forcing them. <laughs> so this is... And this is... Uh, For some all those paying attention according, out there. According to, the, according to the journal, folks, uh, some of them are the exact same families that they're already locked people up. I was just going to ask, yeah, are right. they having these meetings at right. the Ritz where they, they locked had a, They had a picture up? of the Ritz. Yeah. They had a picture of the Ritz. I wonder how I mean? many of those families, they, they you know got a nice little wink and a nod to say, do you remember when we locked up all oh. those other rich people in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, 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 in, including, what's it, Prince Al-Wali, the, I mean, you just not, totally. not unknown people, you know, very yeah. powerful international players, oh. and they had no qualms. So I would imagine there's some heavy pressure to be an investor in the state-owned oil company if you are one of the if truly you, elites in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, you're, you're special. Gonna, you're special, man. Let alone, what, you know, you not can, even... You can give me, like, you know, I don't know, how many billion? You get a hundred billion. Well, I think you should probably give us, like, 30 billion yeah. of that for the IPO. Right. 
Yeah. I mean, they get they get off lucky. They're not even given, right? All you gotta do is buy shares of Namco. Yeah, well, that's to be in, fair. in this particular case, that's right. It's right. a lot better than I'm sure that's spot. what they're saying to them, right? <laughs> You're getting off light. Uh, so we get oil at 57.63. You know, the high that was uh, generated out here last Thursday, which couldn't hold, was 57.76. We'll see how this baby shakes out. And there. oil has come so far since that was first announced, man. Can we put it on a, like a long time? Yes. Um, I guess we'll have to go CL1 maybe. CL, yeah. Because the first talk of that, I remember, it was like. 30 or 40 bucks, I think, oil, and it was like, geez, are they really going to, um, we'll have to pull up those dates because it's interesting because I remember having that discussion. Yeah, I mean, you go back, right? I mean, we're almost near those highs there, but they started talking about that IPO down here, and oh, so yeah. it's not a coincidence that you get an acceleration there. Right. There's no way that they were going to try and pump out their IPO for their state-owned company as oil was at, you know, 42, 40, no. 45, no. 43. Uh, there's no $50 doubt. Seems, seems like a round number, 50 to 60. Yeah, the thing is wild is that, you know, we have a lot. He, well, we know we have a huge amount of oil because of the shale and we're one of the biggest exporters now. Yes. And then you put on top of that that the Saudis are going to take their biggest asset and go public. And, uh, folks, every time you go in public, you know, if you're going to make money hand over fist, and you're making yeah. money hand over fist, you, you stay private. Sure, right. <laughs> you know, um, because you know. they want to diversify into other things, right? So that's that's the counter argument. Yes. But you could still do that while retaining there, ownership. There's no you know, doubt. You could take there's, out loans against it or for the billions and billions of dollars because if there's value in that private company, you don't need to sell your shares to that, even if you wanted to. Um, yeah, we all get yeah, it, right? Yeah. So it's like okay. You know, what, where is that good business going to be like uh, 20 years from now? You right, know, that's, right. That's, if that's, they saw superb growth over the next 20 years, they would not right. do the IPO right now. They'd still have the plan to diversify because eventually fossil fuels are going to get, you know, at least hit a weak demand in turn, or, and a surge in supply. You kind of have both could be happening. You have, you know, electric that's cars right. yeah. are coming solar, on the floor for wind, solar. Wind's the, wind's little, the big thing. You know, that is yeah. it's taken uh, a lot of the energy. Yeah, um, I, just, I mean, we might have all electric cars in 10 years. Yeah. I mean, imagine that, right? But it's, I mean, we saw what we were talking about, the new Porsche on Friday that's coming well, down the line, right? Car. Let alone the Tesla, yeah. yeah. It's just... The XLF, the financials, uh, you got them up 37 cents today, uh, 2781. And uh, they're over the highs of Thursday, so uh, that's a big deal, which is uh, 27.68. We'll see whether it can hold that level commitment to the close today. You're slamming into 107 million shares, you know. Um, you know, Thursday we did uh, 68, and 17 million is pretty good right now for that. Yeah. The, uh, the Fed Fund Futures, I'm sure we're... So it's yeah. looking like a quarter basis. I, I like the, we've been at 100 for it seems like ever across the board, right? But it's interesting seeing these two numbers jab, jump back and forth. Right. And really, what are the odds of 50 basis points? 4%. Yeah, yeah pretty marginal. 95.8 yeah. that we're getting a quarter basis point come September yeah. 18th. Nine days. Wow. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrial is up 87, Nasdaq up two, S and P's up four, and uh, we have the NFL up. We got we? football back, man. First Sunday uh, of action, and uh, you know, from Boston, from people out there, Patriots Nation starting things off on Sunday night football with yeah. quite a bang against their AFC uh, rivals, Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, 33 to three last night. Pa um, Brady, three touchdowns, 341 yards. We're a little biased, but uh, yeah. A great That's performance by the defending crazy. Super Bowl champions. And, of course, the story of the weekend, man, Antonio Brown. So to, to recap for those not aware, Antonio Brown, one of the best receivers in the game by far, used to play with the Steelers last year, had his antics, we'll call them even last year, the Steelers trading him, getting all the value they could, which was only a few or a couple middle-round picks, I believe, from the Raiders. Now, the Raiders were... Because they didn't want him to go to the Patriots anyway. They had actually, so it comes out, they did not want to trade him to the Patriots, even to getting anything back, because so often they face off in the AFC Divi um, Division Championship sure. to go to the Super Bowl. And so what ends up happening, he goes to the Raiders, and there'll be a uh, discussion over whether, how intentional his antics were to get released. But he came out with a video Saturday night, and you could call it kind of a hype video on YouTube himself, and in it, though, was a recording of his coach Gruden talking to him, saying, hey, what the heck's going on, man? Are you going to play football? What is going on? Trying to get his head right, you know, yeah. being like, what is going on? Um, and what some of the first analysis was, hey, that's not even legal, man. You were recording him in a two-party state in terms of both parties have to be aware. Ill illegally recording a phone conversation in California carries a maximum one-year jail sentence, which could be a big problem for Tony Brown if John Gruden wants to stick it to the wide receiver. I'm not sure if that is going to be how this plays out, right. but just off the wall, man. My friends and I talking about it, so I believe it could have been Friday night, Saturday. Nonetheless, he was available as an unrestricted free agent Saturday at 4.01 p.m. Okay. I believe the Patriots had signed him by 5 p.m. within the hour, really? and it would make sense, right? Yeah. If you're going to go after him, right. if you're going to make the risk to put somebody that might be as toxic as this guy on your team but then the discussion comes maybe he was just toxic because he didn't want to play with the Raiders who in fairness um, have a and lot then, of rebuilding that, and I had said to you earlier that the Patriots have picked up a few guys like this right they that, sure have Josh Gordon one of them had struggles with uh, passing drug tests okay. in the NFL and just getting his head right he scored the first page um, Patriots touchdown last night receiving so it'll be interesting to see his antics um, because it wasn't just for the Raiders he also had these going on with Pittsburgh but you could argue he didn't want to be there last year as well. And nonetheless, he, he wants a ring man, maybe. And, and yeah. guess what the quickest way to a, he doesn't have a ring, a right? ring is. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, just sure on the Patriots, your odds are pretty yeah. bad that you haven't got a ring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So pretty interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Now, he was not in uniform last night, though. He okay. is eligible week two to start week playing two. for the Patriots. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here, and we'll see whether we get any volume behind this market out here today. Friday, folks, is a low, low volume market as the market itself was trying to get over those Thursday highs. How about that Acadia Pharmaceuticals, man? They were oh. talking about our man Dave White in the den. Um, rocketed Monday after a biotech company said its psychosis treatment met its key goal in a phase three test. The drug already sells under the name Duplizid, I believe. So, oh. and there you go. But man, up 15 bucks, trading from 25 bucks up 15. Talking about 66% overnight. Pop. Look at this. And look at it back down. It was all the way up to almost 44, 45 bucks. Wow, these biotechs are something right? else, right? You had a high in 2015 of 51.99. You had a low in 2018 of 12, 77. It's a good number, though. Yeah. It's definitely a good number. So. And that'd be great. Psychosis treatment, psychosis, of course, many people, if they, uh, and I don't know what the phases go to what, but phase three. Look at that revenue, man. 61 million to uh, 200, no, 325 million. It's a big number. Look, I mean, they're going to jump to 457 in 2020, and, and right. I wonder if any of those estimations have have incorporated, though, if uh, that drug is passing key yes. tests, and that might change things. Because they're still are saying they're going to be losing position. That's probably one of these gangbuster drugs that uh, you have another company come in and just buy it, right? You yeah, know? I know, yeah. Because once you, once you get up into those billion-dollar drugs, that's when the large drug companies want they're kind very of, quickly. They're just kind of buying a revenue stream at that point. Exactly. There's not much studies left to, do, to be done, right? I mean, there might be, but it's kind of solidified. This is going to be the estimated sales. We're, we've passed FDA, or we, about, we are about to all yep. indications. Um, and they, the, the volatility of those trials has kind of at least mediated a bit. NDX 100. Inside the NDX, you have the, the winners out here. You got uh, Walgreens Boots. That's a, that's a big Staying move for Staying on the healthcare that's drug 3 sector. 3.8 percent. Yeah. Uh, Pace car is up uh, yeah. three point two. Picar, yeah. I forget what this, these ones do. What does this thing do? Develop, manufacture light, medium, and heavy duty trucks. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, they're ARA twenty four billion dollar company. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Can I just see where their yeah. revenue uh, comes in? So U S. and that. Canada fifteen Look billion. And they're taking in mammoth number. I mean, they're they're taking in twenty three point eight billion, and that's basically their market cap. Half billion a week. <laughs> and trucks, parts, and other services, man. And trucks have got so big, man. I mean, you know, trucks are transportation, yeah. of course, but every parking lot, I mean, everyone in the United States looks like they want to own a truck. I think we're a little biased being in Florida. I think we have more pickup trucks than that. Eh, really? Midwest, but I'm going back towards Boston. You know, yeah. as in maybe not as many. SUVs, though, definitely falling yeah. in that category. Crossovers, some, some car companies not even pushing sedans anymore, right? Yeah. You get American Airlines up 78 cents. Uh... NTAP is up uh, 2.8 on the, the lower side. You got Regeneron down three, IDEX Pharmaceutical down Look at three, this pharma Amagen. Labs. Yeah. Chips. Lululemon. Lululemon. What's going on, Lulu? What's happening with Lululemon? We pairing some of those gains from yeah, those $128 joggers. I didn't buy any this weekend. They, they must have got the memo. I forgot to buy my $128 athleisure joggers. So we had uh, it hit 204.43. On Friday. Yeah. And, and it has the, volume behind the move. And look at the open today. I mean, it opened yeah. right there, too. Right. So this wasn't like a weekend recalibration, man. It okay. opened at 930, and somebody said, you know what? All those Friday gains, a little bit more, a little bit more than we should have given it. Yeah. yeah. And this is light volume on the way back, folks. Yeah. This is, you know, this is the light volume retracement that probably wants higher price. Uh, Facebook, let's take a look at a couple of these FANG stocks. You get Facebook, not much happening there. Up 90 cents. Amazon. Same thing, up yeah. six bucks. It's remarkable. Amazon's two hundred bucks off its high when yeah. the markets have kind of definitely clawed back more than that. Yes, and what happens now? We'll just you put it on that chart, and it looks like it's basically right at the highs, yeah. though, right? And, <laughs> and well, and we're going to be talking before we know it, you know, about Christmas shopping. Oh, definitely. I mean, this is it. You know, they, these if if we were we were. In these companies, yep. they're gearing everything up right now, man. Where was I? I was in Sam's Club, and they already have Christmas um, trees and wreaths and decorations. They do? Yeah, yesterday I was in Sam's <laughs> Club, and they're there. So it's Christmas. Uh, We're here, September oh 9th. We're God. past Labor Day. That's now Christmas season. That makes sense. But, you, they, you know, you're talking about lawn stuff, you know, you know trees. But yeah. Sam's Club, man, they're, they're ready and, and kind of out front already, too. Netflix, uh, up 7 bucks. Uh, down from 384 three months ago, 297. That's going to need some juice. Yeah. The uh, 
I stopped watching that. I texted Tommy last night to see if anything good things on Netflix. I stopped watching that Mindhunter. Mindhunter. I love it. If you're into some drama, folks, check yeah. out a good series on Netflix, yeah. and it goes into um, okay. profiling, right, yeah. of the serial right. killers kind of based right. off. It's pretty remarkable. The FBI had no type of profiles at all right. in the 70s, and you started right. to get so interesting drama kind of based on a true story, Mindhunter. Yeah. Check it out on Netflix. Dow, Dow up 94, NASDAQ up 9, S&P's up 4. We'll come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 95. Nasdaq's up 13. S&Ps are up 5. And everyone, folks, is going to Chipotle to eat. That's I guess so, like. man. I like Chipotle. I haven't been there in a while, but I'm a fan of Mexican. And uh, all-time highs, man. 852.19 right now was as high as 857.90. So they got an upgrade this morning. Pretty amazing. I think I have the story up here still. Where are we? Maybe the other story. Anyway, getting an upgrade. And there we are. By Wedbush. So they're looking for 980 over the next 12 months, they were at 780, and uh, quite a pop, 980. We still got 130 bucks to go, but quite a run, man. 247. Yeah. We were sitting at in February of last year. So whatever they had, you know, well, we know what they had. They, you know, had salmonella and I their food. They, yeah. they got rid of it. Was it yeah. E. coli or salmonella? Yeah. And, um, and it's remarkable that that's all the way back in 2015, four years ago. That story began. Okay. And it took almost so two years to bottom and two yeah. years to blow out the top really. again. And you got that little kind of fake pop because I'm from October of 2015. Check that out, though. We go from 
352 up to 500, and yeah. then we get cut in half down to 247 before it makes another run. It's quite a run. Hey, let, let me just, I want to bring those numbers yeah. up. CMG. And that was always the question, right, in terms of, like, are they going to be able to get back on track the, at least? The trust factor. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? Yeah, I'd say so with those numbers, man. And look at how. There's 2015. We saw when it started. Yeah. They're making 15 bucks. They lost it all in 2016. Wow, look at that. To even losing money for a quarter as it was really reverberating. So, so we saw see, the, the spread, what they bring to the bottom line is amazing, folks, because yeah. the gross it really hasn't, well, you know, the gross has gone up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you saw it even go down from 4.5 to 3.9. That's yeah. like a 15% drop in their yeah. revenue alone, especially 1.2 billion to under, you know, almost eight. But they're back. They're back. Yes. And it's football season, so they'll sell even more. Why not? All those TVs. Pizza and Mexican. Yeah. I'm a fan of both. Stay right there, folks. Yeah, totally no, <laughs> no doubt we get that. TD Meritrade coming up next. I'm Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Day White. I'll be back. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Go get them, folks.